So, so for word embedding, I will mainly use uh, this uh, you know, Gutenberg, uh, what is called data set. Okay, just a minute. So, you know that uh, you know, many times throughout our discussion, you are uh, listening about uh, word embedding, right? Embedding techniques in uh, uh, embedding techniques in uh, NLP. So, why do we need it, and uh, what is this basically? The thing is very simple: that uh, we need to assign similar values to the similar word, the same word. If it is same word, that it must have same values. But if they are similar word, they must have similar value, right? Because the machine learning model, deep learning model, all these things uh, don't take uh, this thing as input. Right? That means the text as input. Okay, all the models they need to calculations, calculate you know some kind of level of calculation. So for doing calculation, it needs numerical input. On. So we need to represent our document, our sentence, or whatever you want to say, your tokens or in words into form of, you know, into numeric form, okay, or in form of number, okay. So another thing is uh, happens here that is in a contextual word embedding and the static word embedding. So. <coughs> Okay, yeah. So in contextual, contextual word embedding, aim at you know, capturing the word semantic in different contexts to address the issue of you know, uh, polysemous uh, and context dependent nature of word. Okay, so I'm not uh, going in you know, much detail in theory. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, in you know, word embedding, the more, there are some very popular embedding techniques one of them is uh, what to break and then sorry okay so one of them is what to break then you know uh, globe is another model the global vector for word representation then there is you know uh, elmo model also okay so there is a lot many this is endless endless uh, list uh, you can have so these are something, uh, some of the popular and basic, I, I can say, and our discussion will be based on this, uh, what to pick. Okay, so why do we need you know, what to pick? Uh, basically, uh, it can capture the semantic, okay? So there is two kind of what to pick model, you know, in the same uh, package in, in, in NLTK, one is called uh, continuous bag of word, and another is called skip gram. So, if you have a good amount of data, then continuous bag of word will work very good. If you have a small amount of data, then usually it is recommended that people like to use skip gram. And the main difference is there that is, when you are using this uh, continuous bag of word, what happens? You give you know n number of words are input. It gives you output another word which is related to these input words. Understand? So you give you give an incomplete sentence. You know, say word one particular word is missing. It can recommend you or give you one missing word like that. Okay. But in case of skip gram. There is another model of what to be. Uh, we give one input, okay, and it uh, does all the calculation. And it as output, it gives you multiple related word to the input word. Understand? So this happens. So like, uh, yeah, here you can say, say we have two sentences. Have a good day and have a great day, right? So here you can understand the good and great here in the used in. 
similar context and uh, their meaning is also almost similar similar here right so this is the first thing to note then vocabulary if you see here have a good then great and day so how many what is the size of your vocabulary is becoming it is becoming five uh, now how will you use or give this uh, vocabulary as an input to your machine learning models or deep learning models or neural networks so many of you you know or many somebody can say that we can do some one hot encoding that means one you know what is one hot encoding that is uh, you know if there is five values or five candidate you have you have to have five different you know five uh, binary bits and one bit will be on on to represent each of the uh, you know, term in the vocabulary okay so that is what happened here you can see the diagonal here have means have uh, have at the first position in your vocabulary so one put it here a is at the second position so for a one is put it here and so on so this is a uh, kind of uh, this is called what one hot one hot encoding but problem with this is that if you want to present represent this first sentence using this one, one hot encoding what will happen you will have you know one two three four four of you know such kind of uh, string and which will give you uh, four into five you know, 20 uh, features right so this is uh, basically not an efficient thing and it also uh, does not uh, do good in case of uh, maintaining uh, you can say in case of maintaining the similarity of a word because you can understand for good uh, okay no no maintaining the uh, context of the word but yeah it definitely if luckily if you have this, this kind of thing your you know codes for you know different word or similar word you may get similar but it is uh, you know based on luck you know only if you do simply one hot encoding okay so you can see here for good the vector is zero zero one zero zero for great triple zero one zero okay so they, you can understand this right so better option you need to find that is uh, called what uh, and that is the uh, you know what to take is one of the, the good option for this now there are definitely some pre-trained pre models uh, i'm not going into that so let's uh, jump to the uh, what to make implementation as we don't have much time i have uh, some code and just copying them and pasting here and explaining to you okay so that uh, okay so for implementing it first of all we have to implement uh, sorry we, we have to import some of the libraries right so like pandas we are already familiar with word tokenize we are already familiar with what do we have, which is belongs to gensim model and uh, module of your uh, python and numpy also we are importing as np okay so let's import them then okay then we are just uh, going to import our data set here our data set is a book okay uh, well, the detail of the book i will show you you just uh, if you just copy this link and txt right 
text. Okay, so this book is uh, the Project Gutenberg ebook of Alice's Adventure in the Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Okay, so you can see this is a whole book. Okay, and the title I have shown you. Right, so this book I'm just uh, taking from this URL for our work. Okay, so how we can get access to this? We have to import first NLTK data. Okay. Then sentence tokenizer we will need because this book, if you see, it is a, in a, a, a continuous document. So we have to split this document, or, you know, this huge text into you know, small sentences, right? So we are we will need this send tokenize. Okay, then we will download the punk. We know why you know previously also have shown you. Okay, then URL library, we have to import, okay, from where we'll import request. Because we are requesting some URL and we are just, uh, you can say, picking up the text from there. Okay, so this is what we have done till now. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay, then if you just uh, want to see if we just want to see what thing we got, we're importing it. Okay. So, okay. First, uh, let you open the file. Okay. So, see, this is a variable where we had put the URL of the file. Okay. Now, request dot URL open. Now we are opening the URL into response Alice variable. Okay. Then, reading the file. Here is you know, something you people was asking in previous day. That is uh, recording, encoding, and decoding. Now see, as uh, if you see in the text, there will be many you know characters which are not uh, you know in the ASCII format or you know in uh, UTF-8 format. Okay, so what we are doing here. Even this kind of double quotes, if you see, they, they are, uh, they may not be in UTF format. Okay. okay. And there may be some other many symbols. Okay. So I'm not searching. Uh, it is not possible. Yeah. So, okay. It's just, uh, we're doing the decoding here itself so that, uh, you know, the raw text, what we are uh, getting out of it, it is, uh, you know, all the characters are in UTF-8 format and they will not get uh, this kind of exception or error later on. Okay, then we split in sentences. Okay, so tokenize Alice, we are doing a sent tokenize. Okay, so we and we are passing this through raw data. Okay, now how many sentences we have got by doing this? Just do this so I understand. We had we had uh, eleven hundred two sentences here, right? In that document. Okay. Then remove content means what we are doing. You can see tokenize Alice. You can tokenize Alice, but uh, we are just considering the fourteenth word onwards up to end. Why? Because at the beginning, if you see this. You know, there are, you know, some of these things are there, right? So we would uh, just uh, like to, you know, not take these dates into our consideration or into our analysis. So we can do this. Okay. So this is the thing we're doing. Then if I just print the raw alias, if you see, you will understand. See. At the beginning, this project, Gutenberg, ebook, and all these things are there. We don't want this. Instead, if I print this, oh, sorry, tokenized Alice, you can see, oh my God, it's just filled up. Uh, 
Okay, so it will take time. So I'm just uh, let's try this. So this is the tenth sentence. If you want to see the one the first sentence, you will see. Okay, so this is the first sentence into this. Okay. Okay, so let's move. Now we have the sentences we can now you know split them into word or we can tokenize them, right? So we do this. So you can see we are uh, just uh, taking word tokenize here, right? Then in the row Alice, we are replacing all the new lines available there. The, okay. So this is simply you know just to you know ignore the warnings. This part is done, so don't uh, think about uh, this part. Okay. So in the basically we are again you know using the raw Alice, not the tokenized uh, thing. Okay. So from the raw Alice, you know, all the new lines we have removed first. Okay. Then we had written this tokenization function, so I am not going to explain it again. Okay. Then we had written this uh, remove stop word function. Put it here. We had already written this. Okay, let's uh, go with uh, just modifying this or calling these functions also. Okay, so that uh, you can understand that what is happening in each of the part. Okay, so <clears throat> tokenization function, we are calling it here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the raw Alice is basically here tokenized. Okay, the raw Alice is tokenized here. Okay, then Mm. Remove stop word. Okay, so you know this thing we have to do basically the stop word need to be downloaded and all we have done. Then we take this function you know, we had previously written. Okay, then we will call the function. Okay, so stop words are being, I uh, can say, removed. Then we are going for removing the punctuations. This function also, the, our uh, one function, what we had written in the previous session. Okay, so doing this. So after removing punctuation, let's see how our tokens are looking like. You can see this is how it is looking like. Then, yeah, we this is a new function. We are just uh, removing all the non alphabets. Okay, because you know there is many you know, this uh, slash, sometimes this semicolon, and all these things are there in our token double count. Okay, so we just want to you know, remove them from our text. Okay. So do this. So and it is just do using you know each alpha function we are doing. Okay, I'm just not uh, going into each lines explanation. Uh, reason is you are already becoming habituated with uh, Python a little bit, and we don't have much time. So I'm trying to just uh, cover it as soon as possible. Now we are creating the model of what do we. So what do we make? We had called uh, by, you know, at the beginning, I think you remember, uh, from the GenSim library. Okay, so the model is created. So here I have listed uh, what are the different parameters you can pass to it. Okay, so token you must uh, definitely you have to pass, right? Then minimum count. So here we have put it to one, but uh, by default it is a uh, five. Okay, then uh, size, uh, the size of the vector basically, uh, we have uh, limited, uh, sorry, we have put it uh, 
I put it at hundred by default is it is also hundred. Okay, but there are other thing also. You know, this SC you can set to use the skip gram or uh, what uh, CBOW or uh, you know continuous backup or which model you are uh, um, trying to use. Okay, uh, by default it will be you know COP only. Okay. Then iterate number of iteration you want to iterate uh, all these things. I said this is uh, this uh, you know. You have to understand one thing here. This what to break is nothing but a neural network. Okay, it is a neural networking. You know, actually, this neural network, you know, thinks that how each token will be assigned with some, with some vector. Understand? Now see how this model is working. Okay. So first, uh, let's print the model. Is that in the vocabulary of uh, your model, there is uh, 2731 uh, vocabulary, size is 100, and uh, alpha value is uh, 0 0.025. Okay, alpha is what learning rate. If you know the in, uh, neural networks, this learning rate is there, so alpha is there, uh, learning rate, what uh, they have used. Okay, next you just come here. Okay. If I just, uh, you know, um, the learned vocabulary of uh, tokens is stored into this place, okay? This, and after learning, but vocabulary is generated, that is going to be stored into this place, that is model.wv, okay? So, if you see here, what we're doing, we're just uh, taking 10 of the token into our, uh, we're just trying to print 10 of the tokens here, because uh, this model dot m mv is not a simple list, okay. So you can't uh, you know print it by using a simple print command and giving some slides, okay. So using for loop we are printing it, okay. So you can see all these are the part of vocabulary. That means this uh, you know two thousand seven hundred thirty one words, okay. Next uh, you go. Do some more explore exploration on this. Okay, so what do you got? Some words we are uh, taking out of it. Yeah. So what are the words that they are in the vocabulary? Okay. So you know that time we had done it using using what using a for loop. Now we are simply taken all out. So you can see the list of words and again uh, in the in the present in the vocabulary, right? So next you go, length of this, length of the, this thing was already, already we have seen in the in detail of the model it, when we had printed, but manually again we can check it. Okay, so this is the size of the vocabulary. Okay, now something what we was uh, speaking about, let's do that. See. Mm. Uh, we want to see what is the vector generated for the term Alice, okay? So, uh, the length of the vector for Alice. You can see here it is 100, okay? But if you want to see what is the actual vector for Alice, uh, you, can just, you can just uh, print the vector, okay? Or you can just, uh, you can see, you can do this, okay? The first one is printing the vector for drink. Okay, so drink is a word in the vocabulary. You can see here, this is the vector. Okay, for drink, and for Alice, this is the vector. Okay, so in this vector, basically there is hundred such terms or such numbers. Okay, so this is what uh, the you can say vector form of each word. Okay. This is what by, by our uh, what to vec have done. It converted a word to a vector of size hundred. Simply said. Okay. Now you go do some more exploration. Like uh, you know, we are taking uh, input say Alice, and we want to see what is the most positive and similar word available 
in the vocabulary to the Alice. To Alice, right? Now, the thing is that here similarity means what? Most related. Okay. So you see here. See, said little queen one went. So these are the different words. You know, frequently appeared with Alice. You can see here the score is also given. Okay. See, nine point eight. Uh, this is the similarity score you can say okay cosine similarity all right so this is the similarity <clears throat> so this is how you know the, for the similar word it gives uh, you know similar uh, score so as these words are uh, you know more very related to alice okay and uh, frequently appeared with alice so you can see all these words are having you know quite similar uh, distance from alice okay then take two word and just uh, based on that you take uh, the distance of the third word. Okay, say Alice and say we have Kate. Okay, uh, and in W two we have Wonderland. Okay, so what is the you know uh, what is the what is the related word among you can say this uh, this is positive and negative is w2 so if i understand that uh, you know this alice when alice is positive and this second word is negative okay so how many times it can you know or you can say what is the top two words due to which this happens or related to this okay so that is one and another word is there that is cloud that means it may be there somewhere it is written when uh, you know due to cloud alice uh, was not entered into water wonderland or something like that may be there okay so due to this words basically this and this word pair became uh, you know negative i think okay so this is what we can uh, do uh, okay the, so sorry most uh, most similar then 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 yeah or the odd thing out this is another interesting thing you can see here see alice went and queen we have given together see went is odd here alice and queen they are quite similar okay so in this way you can choose any you know number of words from our vocabulary here okay and you can just uh, pass to this uh, and your model will uh, based on the distance among these words it will say which are more related, most related, and which is which word is uh, you know at at the you know longest distance among all to all other available words or terms. Okay, so this is the final code. I'm just uh, going to put here. Okay, this is uh, you can see where uh, using yeah cb well then that is continuous bag of word model okay and uh, you can see this is the result we are getting similarity between alice and wonderland is this and uh, this okay so by default it is uh, using a cbow and uh, if you use keep gram for the same database what kind of uh, result you will find as i told you there's two kind of uh, thing in here so as you can see is equal to one is set to select skip gram and you can see the similarity cosine similarity between alice and underland and skip gram is very high okay but when you are using continuous back of word they are very low so you can understand you know based on your situation and context you have to choose the model whether you will use the skip gram or whether you will use uh, the continuous back of word okay so this is all from my side for today. It is already uh, time for your uh, quiz. So I'm just uh, ending this here. If you have some question, just a minute. Uh, you can ask uh, some question in uh, very fast manner. Uh, please share this notebook to us. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. 
in the GitHub, I will share it, okay? And I'll share the link, all right? Sir, can this method be followed for Indian languages also? Excuse me, uh, your voice was too low. Sir, am I audible? Uh, yes, you are audible. Uh, sir, can, can this method be used for Indian languages also? Mm, the same question. Uh, you have to check out, okay? I have never checked because uh, I, I had not worked, uh, you know, with Indian language in past, but we need to check it. Okay, sir. 